And on that day, I knew that there was absolutely no going back. This was it for me. I have to follow the Lord. Hi everyone, my name is Molliday and welcome or welcome back to my channel and thank you for being here. So today, as you can see in the title, I'm going to be sharing about my testimony and in all honesty, I've been a little hesitant to film this video. I feel like I've been dragging my feet for a while, but I believe that God has placed this on my heart and that it is just something that I need to share now. So I felt led to really just share about God's goodness and just all that he has done. And yeah, I'm really just trying to be obedient to that. And as I kind of just share this story it really is less about you know my life and the details of my life and really more about just the overall goodness of god and just who he is so i grew up in a mixed faith family with my dad as a muslim and my mom as a christian and like many other nigerian or immigrant families i spent a lot of my childhood here in the united states with my mom and my siblings and my dad was working in nigeria and growing up my family had moved around a bit and i do remember that i had become pretty shy i was a new kid a lot of the time and in classrooms i just remember being so quiet i feel like i didn't really talk and you guys might think my voice is you know soft now but i think that even when i was younger i would talk in just like a whisper i was just so shy and didn't feel confident talking or comfortable talking to people and i know that growing up i did come to know about god and i came to just believe in god and fear god just growing up with my mom at home and going to different children's bible studies and church on sundays so i definitely had a knowledge about god and i always believed that there was a god out there the way you know my parents raised me and just coming from a nigerian home and all of that it's like i grew up knowing right from wrong i grew up fearing god and just in general as i was growing up there was a lot of things that i didn't do or a lot of things that i you know maybe got close to doing but i didn't fully do it just because i still had this fear of god so fast forward to middle school i lived in connecticut with my family and at some point in middle school i remember that i befriended this girl in school and by way of just me and her being friends i remember in about eighth grade kind of being in this in crowd with these people and it was the first time where i felt like i was kind of in a group and being in with this crowd is very different for me because i wasn't really used to having a lot of friends or having people talk to me and just kind of having a social life i think just again with growing up and being shy i also just became self-conscious you know and just not a very confident person and the town that i was living in it was just not a diverse town so i was you know one of the only black people and i just remember comparing myself and not feeling you know pretty people would talk about boys and this boy likes this girl and different things like that and i just felt like okay you know no one no one likes me the one thing about me during this season of life when i had just kind of gotten into this in crowd is i kind of became like a gossip i would get involved in conversations where you know we were gossiping or talking about different things or different people and it ended up getting me in trouble at one point i was also good friends with another guy in the group one time when we were talking they ended up bringing up my best friend at the time and we ended up talking about i think a situation that happened you know of course she didn't like that we were talking about her or talking about a situation that had to do with her and then because of that she ended up distancing herself from me so every Everyone in that group just ended up not wanting anything to do with me because they saw that she wasn't talking to me it just became this thing of losing friends i remember now going into the lunch rooms and just not knowing where to sit and just feeling so awkward so pretty much middle school at the end of middle school is kind of when i started developing some anxiety and i just started developing anxiety about going to school about being around people and i just got so socially anxious that that's when i started eating in the school bathroom in the eighth grade I felt like i would walk in the cafeteria and everyone is staring at me i always now kind of joke 
about the movie Mean Girls and I kind of related a lot to that movie because that's honestly kind of what it felt like for me. So I entered high school just feeling really down. I just felt like, oh my gosh, this is going to be miserable because it's all the same people from middle school who knew that this situation happened. Entering high school and being in high school, everything just kind of escalated. I was having very bad anxiety just about going to school and just started dealing with depression and just loneliness. Entering high school, I knew that I didn't have any friends and I somehow got this idea in my mind that maybe if I had a, a bit of a glow up and you know maybe lost some weight that would attract people to want to be my friend. I ended up just developing eating disorders and I started binging and purging and again in high school I continued that practice of eating lunch in the bathroom almost every single day or I would eat lunch in the nurse's office. I also became good friends with the in-school suspension monitor. I never got in school suspension but he would see me roaming the halls by myself during lunchtime and he just became like a grandfather type of figure to me so I would just eat in his room, eat in the nurse's office or eat in the bathroom and I ended up making a best friend in high school which was just so nice and so amazing to have and we both kind of felt the same way about high school so we really just clung on to each other. I don't know how many years it's been but we're still friends to this day along with making her as a friend. I also ended up making friends with a lot of kids who also felt like misfits and who also felt like lone wolves so I just felt really accepted by this group of people and after school we ended up just hanging out sometimes. This is kind of when I started getting into things like smoking cigarettes, smoking weed. We had such different backgrounds but I just really connected with them. Even though I had that community now and I didn't feel as alone, every time I was by myself I didn't feel like there was a purpose for me and I just remember a lot of times just wishing that I wasn't alive. I would be you know, after school, maybe walking to the library or something and I'd be by myself and I would just have this temptation to kind of like run into traffic. You know, I just had like these different ideations and it always just kind of felt like there was just this void inside of me. And yeah, so I just remember in high school just getting into just not good things like the smoking, drinking, eating disorder, watching pornography, stealing. So now fast forward to the summer going into college. I remember just one day sitting at home and just feeling like the choices that I was making, that is not the path that I should be going on. That fear of God that I remembered having as a child growing up, that was kind of what was coming to the forefront. Just fear essentially that if I don't switch things around, I'm not going to end up in a good place. I remember going online to different forums like Tumblr and finding other people who were young people who were Christians. I just felt like, okay, this is what I need to be like. This is what I need to do. And yeah, so I entered college thinking I was going to be, you know, a Christian college student. Early into college, I made friends with this one girl and we both really liked music. And one day she was looking at my phone to see my different playlist and she saw that I had this one playlist and mine you yes the playlist title was corny it was called jesus jams and she saw it and i remember just feeling so so embarrassed so nonetheless i literally ended up deleting that whole playlist and i did not want to have that association i just was too embarrassed and i was not strong enough to stand on the fact that I wanted to get close to God and I felt like I needed to get close to God. I was just too concerned with how that looked to other people. And at this point in college, I was what you would call lukewarm, where I essentially called myself a Christian, but I was not, I was not living for Christ. I didn't know really who Christ was, but I just said that I was a Christian because that is how I grew up and because I still had a fear of God. Because of the fear of God I had, even though I wasn't living for him at all, there were certain things that I just knew I shouldn't do. I was always trying to see how far I could get to sin without actually having it be called sin. You know, trying to find the loopholes, trying to do everything but the thing. And then at this point, I kind of just started reverting back to how I was in high school, you know, going back to smoking. I went to a state school, parties all the time, drugs. And I also just had this delusion where I somehow just felt like as long as I'm a virgin, it doesn't matter what else that I do because I just had this feeling like that was the ultimate sin because I always heard, you know, that was just, you just don't do that. But I was still doing just so many other things. I would look around the college town and I would think, 
okay, you know, people are having one night stands. I'm not having a one night stand. People are doing lines of cocaine and I'm not doing lines of cocaine. I'm just, you know, dabbing it, putting it on my gum a little bit, but I'm not snorting. So I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I was in this delusion because I thought that what I was doing was not that bad compared to other people. And just quick side note, God doesn't compare us against our friends. That's not the criteria. The criteria is the word of God. So I was pretty much still just doing what I wanted, thinking I'm still good because what I was doing was not that bad. But I was just under a delusion because I was doing all types of stuff. I remember even just my, my being and my language was just so vulgar. You know, I was still stealing. I would go to stores and I would constantly swipe something. And then another thing in college, one of my biggest goals was to find myself a sugar daddy because I also just loved money and I loved material things. And I also just think there was still just, you know, a void inside of me. So for a season in college, I would take the train up to New York City and go on a date, going on these dates and get the free meals. I pretty much gave up on that desire when all of the doors just kept on closing. It did not go how I wanted it to go, but still, I just feel like my mind, I just still had a, a, a perverted like outlook. So there was a point in college where I fell ill and it was days of me having fevers, high fevers. I think one of the times my fever went up to 105 or 106. And thank God for my mom being a doctor that she was able to say that something is just not good. And I was going to my college doctors and they were just misdiagnosing me and they, they didn't really know what was going on. I developed a lump in my neck and then one day I got a call from my campus doctor who told me that I needed to go to the emergency room immediately because they discovered that I had this illness called Lemire's syndrome. It essentially caused a blood clot in my neck. I was hospitalized for a few weeks and the doctors were pretty much advising that I should take the year off college so that I could rest and heal. And after that situation, I remember that the anxiety that I had had was really heightened during this time. I kind of developed like a, an anxiety to just sleep and I would stay up all night. I would sleep with my lights on and I would sleep, you know, seated up. I had to do these blood thinner injections every day. Walking was really hard because I was so short of breath. So during this time before I was diagnosed, I kept on having to go to the clinic at my college campus. And on three different occasions, I ended up getting the same Uber driver. He would just look at me and say, you do not look good. And then he told me that my college has this campus ministry and that I needed to check it out. So he said that the first time he picked me up and then the second time he picked me up, he mentioned it. And I'll get into that in just a second. But that was essentially what my college was looking like. And I had friends in college. I was able to do a lot of fun stuff but it always just felt like there was this cloud over me that even if I was having a good time or laughing like I always just pictured it like there was just this gray cloud that was just over my head and it felt like that cloud was just with me everywhere that I went so fast forward my senior year the day is October 25th, 2016, and I'm living with my college best friend at an apartment off campus. And on this day, my roommate was away from the apartment, so I was just home alone. And on this day, I was having a really, really tough day, and I just remember I was feeling so heavy. I was feeling so just depressed this day. I was in my apartment and I was crying. It also was just like all these thoughts just started swarming in my head, pretty much telling me that I didn't deserve to live, that I had no purpose, that I was this or that, like just negative things were running through my head. And I just remember pacing around my apartment. I went into my kitchen and I actually, I picked up a knife. I put the knife back down, picked it up. It was just this thing because it just felt like the thoughts and the negative thoughts and the negative feelings, it was just so overwhelming. When this was happening, I remember just crying out. I was trying to talk back to those lies that were coming at me like, no, this is not how it's supposed to go. I just knew that there was something more for me, even though, you know, these lies and all these things were swarming in my head. I just knew that this could not, this could not be it. Like there had to be more 
to this life. I ended up going into my bedroom and locking the door because I didn't want to be in the kitchen. I just didn't know what was happening. The only thing I could think to do at that time, I went on YouTube and I searched prayer against depression. And it was like the first thing I think that popped up. There was this prayer on there and I still remember the guy's name, Apostle Tim, and he had a prayer on YouTube and I clicked it. At the end of the prayer, something just popped in my mind and it was a reminder to me that today is Tuesday and this is the day that that campus ministry meets. And it was crazy because I looked at the time, the campus ministry is about to start in about 30 minutes. So after I listened to that prayer, I got ready and I ended up just walking back onto campus and going into the campus ministry. When I entered the campus ministry that day, the leader, he said, this is gonna be a different day. I think typically the structure was that they just had worship and then someone would give a message and he said, we're gonna do things differently today. He said, I believe that some people need to be set free today. He said, today we're gonna worship God and today we're going to call and cry out to God and people are gonna be set free today. I was like, okay. He was saying, you know, just cry out to God. What is heavy on your mind right now? Like, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. So I just remember crying out and saying the things that I needed to be free from. And I said, depression, for God to take away the depression. And then the next thing that came to mind was I said, I don't want to, I don't want to watch porn habitually anymore. So I really just said those two things and I cried out to God. And if I had known, if I had known, that that day I was gonna be set free. I would have cried out and said every single thing that had ever plagued me. Those were just the things that I felt like I needed to say at that time. So anyways, at that point I cried out to God and I knew when I left that room that things were gonna be different. Just a couple hours ago, the enemy was trying to take my life, but the Lord, he snatched me, he snatched me and he, turn everything around that is the day that the lord saved me his daughter so i left the campus ministry that day when it ended and i remember walking back to my apartment and the thing that i felt immediately was that that spirit of depression that cloud that was constantly following me that gray cloud that cloud was eradicated. I walked home that day and I was laughing. I was literally just laughing from my belly because I finally felt like something was ripped from me. Like that, that heaviness was ripped from me. And I just remember feeling different. I felt lighter. I was walking home and I was literally just laughing because I was like, what? Like I just felt, I just felt different. I felt lighter. I felt like the weight, the brick, the heaviness was just gone. And it, it just like that, <laughs> just like that. So for me, as for me personally, that was the day the Lord set me free. And the two things that I mentioned to him, those were the last days that I ever dealt with those things. The things that I, I released to him on that day, I was set free from those things on that day, October 25th. And on that day, I knew that there was absolutely no going back. This was it for me. I have to follow the Lord. So I continued to go back to the campus ministry every week and it was just, yeah, it was everything. It was everything for me. And it allowed me to begin to develop a relationship with the Lord and be around other people. I remember looking around and I saw other people who were my age in college and they were their hands were raised they were loving the lord i was like what is this i i had never seen anything like it before and since that day that i i said yes to jesus i said i am following you and there's no turning back the lord just continued to prune me and he turned me into a new creation i remember looking back at some journals right after i got saved i still had you know a potty mouth with swearing and over time, God had poured out his spirit in me and began to convict me of these things that I used to deem as normal. And when I say convict me, I mean that he put this impression in my heart that I can't do that anymore, that I shouldn't do that anymore. Shortly after I got saved, I was in a CVS and typically when I would go to CVSs, I would always, you know, swipe something. And I remember I picked something up 
and again that conviction came and it said that's not this is not you anymore you don't you don't do this anymore maybe a few months after i got saved there were challenges dealing with just lies and different things and i remember going to the campus ministry leader and i and i told him what i was dealing with and he he gave me the verse philippians 4 6 and i remember thinking that's it <laughs> i remember at the time thinking that was not enough but i ended up getting into the word of god and that was the beginning of me starting to then dive into the word of god this word of god i had to go get it but me diving into the word of god and realizing that this the word of god has power and that helped me to bring more healing more freedom i realized that i actually need to read this because that was my first time ever diving into the Bible. All those years that I called myself a Christian, I didn't know what this this said. And then I was able to really learn who Jesus was. Fully God, fully man, who came on this earth to set the captives free. And that Jesus died on the cross in our place so that we could have life and so that we could be reconnected to our Father, to God. He rose again from death proving that he is God and that he has victory over life, victory over death, victory over every single thing. I had always heard that Jesus was a savior, but he became not just a savior to me, he became the Lord of my life. Once I got saved, it's like everything changed for me and I felt like I had a new name, you know? I felt like I, I was just this new creation and that's around the time that I started going by this my name, my Nigerian name, Malade. I went by my other name in middle school, high school, college, Omalade, my name. It means my child is of the crown. And that's also where my YouTube handle name comes from. The Lord has just continued to walk with me through highs and lows, and he has been faithful in every single season. He walked with me when I graduated college and I had no idea what I was gonna do post-grad and not knowing how everything would turn out well, and he, carried me through that. He carried me through every season. He gave me a voice. He gave me freedom. He gave me healing. He gave me peace. He has restored things that were lost. He has restored relationships with family members. He's just restored so much. I can't even begin to list since that time just how many things that the Lord has freed me and healed me and delivered me from. And the Lord is still healing. He's still delivering me. He's still revealing things to me about myself that need more pruning. He's constantly at work and I will never arrive. And none of us on this Christian walk are ever going to arrive because the Lord is constantly going to show us a point of us that needs to be refined. And one of my biggest takeaways that I've had in this walk in the verse Psalm 73 28 where it says but as for me it is good to be near God and as I'm filming this video right now I am personally going through a difficult season at work that has been really mentally exhausting long story short I'm kind of in the thick of that right now and it's funny how it's in this time that the Lord has still pressed it upon my heart to still testify of his goodness because it doesn't negate who God is it doesn't negate that he has it all under control and even though i'm wondering to myself sometimes why am i having to deal with this he's giving me grace each day to just tackle the things that i need to tackle he is good even in those moments in those seasons and i trust that he will always make a way because he loves me and because i'm his daughter and i feel like i just have to say that because that is the reality of this journey and this walk there's still going to be difficult seasons, but it is good to be near God and having him as a resting place provides peace that can't get can't get from anywhere else. And that's just and that's just that. So yeah, that is my salvation story. It has been over 7 years, almost 8 years now walking in this journey with the Lord and I am so grateful. You know, whatever it is that you are dealing with, fears, worries, anxiety, hopelessness, depression. You have a father in heaven that loves you. And so for anyone who is desiring to draw close to God, we can go ahead and we can just pray and agree in prayer together. This is just for anyone who wants to make Jesus the Lord of their life. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for who you are. 
I thank you that you are the Lord of Lords and you are the King of all Kings, Lord. And I just lift up your, your daughter or your son who is listening right now to this prayer. They desire to, to draw near to you. They desire to make you their Lord, O oh God. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would you would just cover them, O oh God, that you would just continue to draw them near to you, that you would just continue to make yourself known to them, Lord God. I pray, God, that the things that are plaguing them right now, Lord, any just heaviness, sadness, confusion, depression, O oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just help them, O oh God, that you would just heal them, O oh God, that you would just draw them back to you. I pray that you would provide godly community around them and just a true godly community to walk with them a bible believing church oh god i plead the blood of jesus over them oh god i ask for protection over their mind over their body over their spirit i pray god that you would protect them from the evil one that you would protect them from darkness oh god and that they would walk with you and walk in your light so please just go before them god and make every crooked path straight in Jesus' name amen 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 so thank you so much for watching i really pray that for whoever this was for that it encouraged you or that it blessed you and yeah so thank you again so much for watching and for being here and i will see you all in the next one bye